If you use the internet, you have likely used the drop down menu before. They primarily serve two purposes collecting user input in a web form and implementing action navigation menus in web application. Drop downs are one of the best ways to offer numerous options for similar collection of elements without needing to compromise and applications generally layout flow. Aside from web apps, they are also used in standalone software operating system and so on. In this guide, you will learn how to build drop down navigation menus using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now that we have covered the fundamental of drop down menu, let's discuss the steps for how to build one. So we're going to build the drop down menu in three steps. First, we're going to talk about the markup of a drop down menu and then we are going to add some style and at the end we are going to add the functionality so the first step is add the markup for the drop down menu since we have been using icon in this guide we need to first import them for simplicity we will be using the free library called box icons feel free to pick another alternatives you prefer there are several ways to set up a box icon in your site. After importing the icons, create a div element with a class of container. This element will contain the button and drop down menu. Inside the container, create a button element and give it a class and ID of btn. For the button, pass in the button text and arrow icon. Here is the markup for the button. Next up, we will add the markup for the drop down menu itself. Underneath the button tag, create a div element and give it a class and ID of a drop down. Inside the div element, create an A tag for each individual drop down item and pass in their respective icon and text. Here is what the markup looks like. And this is the output. It doesn't look good yet so let's start styling the menu and uh, for this we are going to start our second step which is the style drop down menu so first we are going to add import uh, the font google font url and then we are going to reset the default margin and padding of every element on the page and store some values in our variables so we can reuse it throughout our CSS file. Then we will give the body element some global style. The next step is styling the button and drop down container itself. In order to speed things up, I will explain only the important bits of the style. Since the drop down menu are usually placed over element, the button was positioned relative and the drop down menu position absolute. This ensures that both elements will be close to each other and the drop down menu will be placed over element. This way when toggled it wouldn't affect the flow of the page. Now the drop down has been styled. We want it to appear only when the button has been clicked rather than immediately to hide it. We will use CSS. For this we will be following the different approach to hide the drop down menu. This involves combining the visibility and opacity properties together to get the desired result. Inside the drop down class we created earlier, add visibility property and give it a value of hidden and set the opacity to zero. Doing this will hide the drop down menu for a, from a page. In order to show the model, we create a separate class called show. This class will hold the visibility property and a value of visible and opacity of 1. And we can inject this class into the model using JavaScript in a bit. Now here is the code you can see on the screen. Alongside the style to hide the model element, we added another class to rooted the arrow icon when the drop down button is clicked. By the end of the style, we can start up our third step, which is adding the functionality to the dropdown. For starts, let's store our respective 
elements into the variable so they are reusable. The next step is to create a function to toggle uh, the show class on the drop down element and to rotate the drop down arrow when the button is clicked. We will name this function toggle drop down and then we can call this function on the drop down button by using the add event listener method. So anytime the button is clicked, it will fire the function which controls showing and hiding the drop down menu. If you notice, we added a stop propagation method inside the drop down function. This prevents the function of the button element uh, from being passed down to the parent element. Thus, stopping the function from running twice, you will understand more about this in the next section. Now, the question is here how to close the drop down menu when a DOM element is clicked. The drop down menus are usually closed in four different ways. First one, by clicking the button that activates it. Second, by clicking on any of its child element, by clicking outside of the menu or the body, by hitting the space or down arrow keys. But for this guide, let's concentrate on the first three steps. First, we will select the root HTML element using document dot document element and as before we will pass in the toggle drop down function inside but this time we want to define the condition that checks if the drop down menu contains the show class or not only when it does do we want to fire the close function now here is the final result and that is how you build the drop down menu using the javascript